Okay, so today's studio is super duper cool. As you know, we've done a bunch of these every Monday on the channel. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you can catch them. We've seen a lot of different really cool home studios, kind of backyard studios, garage studio, entire home studios. But today is a really unique style of backyard home studio. And it's with my friend Mark. He is an incredible American singer songwriter. He's actually from New York lives here in Nashville now. I actually found his studio from Josh Niles who builds ridiculous studios. And he did gray boxes studio, he's done a bunch of other studios, but he built Mark's studio and I saw it and it's such a unique design. I love the way it's laid out. It's actually unlike anything I've, I've seen in this series so far. And this is, we've done what, over 50 videos. Mark's received praise from Demi Lovato and Rob Thomas. He's worked with Ben Rector, all the way to people like Jim Jones, Rick Ross, and Fabulous. He's gone on tour with people like James Bay, to Zach Brown Band, to Butch Walker, all the way to Nick Jonas, and many, many more. He has a fantastic new album out called Seed of Joy. Go give him a follow, go check out the record if you haven't heard it, Mark Sibilia fantastic artist and just a super cool dude. Thanks, Mark, for having me out. Give him a follow, go check out Seed of Joy. Of course, you can find all of his links down in the description. Today's video is brought to you by Sweetwater, the number one online distributor and retailer of pro audio, musical instruments, and just awesome fun things for your studio. If you didn't know, every Monday on this channel, we go and visit and take a tour of different epic home studio, or commercial studio, production studio, whatever we can find. So if you're like me and you're constantly looking to upgrade to some new epic gear for your studio, these videos are a great chance to just see what other people are using, how they're using them. All the stuff in my studio, I actually link down in the description. You can click those links, it takes you right to Sweetwater and you can buy it, it actually supports the channel. Getting it from Sweetwater gets you the best deals, the best warranty and the best customer service. So thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. And if you guys have any questions for me, you can leave them down in the comments or you can actually book me for a Zoom call consultation or any of the services you see here at andrewmastersmusic.com. All right, let's go check out Mark's studio. How's it going? Good, man. So how long have you lived here? I've lived in this house for six and a half years and I've had this studio for almost a year, about probably 10 months. Yeah, Josh Niles built the studio. Did you know him before? He helped me set up my last studio uh, that was in the basement of my house. He helped me kind of make it sound like a little better than a basement. Well, this is sweet. This is like a nice outdoor area here. Yeah, thank you. Come on in. Check it out. Yeah, this is a, a first of these kind of studios to see like a nice spot to hang out outside. That was my wife's idea. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. What was the concept for this? Because this is this is all one room. I think I wanted to make a studio that didn't really feel like a studio. It actually yeah. probably feels more like a studio than I even originally intended. But my idea was to have a place where I mean, my ultimate goal is to have a studio where you really have no idea it's a studio. You hide the gear and bookshelves and stuff like that. I don't really like changing dials too much. You know, I don't like, I like kind of leaving microphones up in place. And so this is a kind of a beginning stage of that type of studio where everything's on wheels. So you can wheel everything out of the way. This couch is on wheels. You could put the couch here. You know, like even the, like this TV goes down and sinks down into the console there. You can basically manipulate the room however you want. So. If you don't want to work on music, you could move all this, then you could pull a couch up here, you just watch a movie or whatever. But you know, if you decide I'm gonna do, you know, Mellotron today, great, you pull that up. If you don't want to do it, you know, you can, whatever, these are all movable. Dude, that's so awesome that the screen is just completely gone. Yeah, so, you know, depending on how you want to set it up, obviously like the desk is, you could stand, or you Ooh, can sit. I love that. You know, I like to stand sometimes. I like standing less than I thought I would all the time, but. I actually just started using like a side table. Do you know who makes this? I or where'd you get this? I actually don't. I got it on, my friend sent me a link and I bought it on Amazon. I love that it's on wheels too. And then I just get a couple little guitar stands. So if I'm, if I know I'm gonna be working on bass, then I'll just pull out my basses. I'll set them up, you know, here or something. And then I can kind of pick between things. It's kind of like just an organic space to to you can write, kind of do whatever you want, make yeah. music, but it's also ready and very well built and tuned. So yeah, you exactly. Can it, make it's a really just kind of a really good room, and I think that's where a lot of studios. I mean, look, I'm no expert, but you know, I think that's where a lot of studios go wrong is that they design everything around the sound. With this studio, 
I kind of want to design it all around the feel. I mean, so you traditionally yeah. wouldn't have this many windows in a studio. They're not like the best surfaces. You know, people make huge records now in their bedrooms. So I thought, okay, if someone can, you know, make a, you know, award-winning record in their bedroom, then why can't I just make the sickest bedroom and then we'll yeah. just put some, put some great gear in it. The ceiling looks like it's made out of panels. Yeah, so our plan was to put a cloud above my head where I would work and then kind of as we got about three months, four months to finishing, I said this room just feels too good wide open like this. We have to figure out another solution. So we kept going back and forth and then finally he came up with this genius idea to basically coat the ceilings in this stuff fabric track. So it's it, the ceiling is one big absorber. So the other nice thing is that means you don't have to do as much on the walls. The room has some life to it so if you back up off of a microphone you hear the room but if you get close you don't really hear the room generally is the case but i think this room does this particularly well you really can have two different sounds just by where you're standing i kind of keep my my main microphones ready to go so this is the ea a448 yeah and then it's like a u67 those are kind of like two different ends of the spectrum, so I have those ready to go, and then I have an, 80, an old 87 here. You know, if I want more of a roomy thing, I'm going to kind of put this microphone a little back, you know, and it's going to give me like a great natural room sound. And then these microphones here that go through a little special reverb thing that I have, a little secret sauce, and I can make this room sound like almost as big as anything just through the distance of the microphones. You're primarily like a writer and an artist, right? Yeah, I'm primarily an artist, but I just happen to like have this super nerd side that, you know, I've always loved, I was always in like science fair and stuff like that. So I love like fiddling around with things. I also love like design to some extent, and I really love building things and sometimes Building a studio is easier than writing a song, so. And are you originally from Nashville? I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. So I've been here for like, I don't know how many years, it's been a long time, on and off since 2004. Okay, so, and then you have a loft upstairs. Is this for guests? Yeah, it can be. It doesn't get used a ton, but yeah, like if I have friends come, they stay up there. There's a little spot you can sit. I have like another Pro Tool set up that I can rig up there, and then I got some speakers up there if you want. That wall is obviously absorbed, so you can work up there too. Sometimes like some different people have used, like I had um, Pink Sweats worked here and they had a couple guys. I had the NS10s over here and then I, you know, there was like a setup up there. You know, depending on how people like to work, there's a couple guys. Sometimes it's cool to be able to have three computers going and then just be able to play stuff and the speaker's already fired up. I've seen your stuff on Instagram of where you're just like, one day you're playing guitar, one day you're playing drums and singing just play whatever is, is flowing through you or yeah yeah i mean i don't I, I i started playing piano when i was a kid so piano was like my first instrument but i would say i'm definitely like a jack of many trades i guess i'm more of an owner of guitars than i'm a player of guitars you know and all this stuff i you know i kind of just i know enough to to be able to do what i need to do so you got a kitchenette over here yeah right bathroom's back there there's really no iso booth someone used a studio and they wanted an iso booth so i actually we just threw up some blankets and some sound absorption. So the bathroom actually doubles as a vocal booth. Sweet. Um, obviously it limits what you'd want someone to be able to do in the bathroom. So this is, it's kind of like a desk anti-desk. Certainly like a console or something would be, may, might be nice too. But again, I just didn't want it to feel like it was a studio studio. So I have this here. So if you want to work, you can work and you can kind of be wherever. I don't really, like I said before, everything kind of stays mic'd up. So I'm not really changing. Yeah sounds or positions of things. I kind of know the way I like it to sound and then I, I just leave it. What's cool about this thing is a lot of like sound issues can come from the desk. I've heard that, yeah. And so getting the desk out of here and then having those beautiful, those are the 150s, right? The yeah. ACs. Those have to be the sound anchors, right? Yeah. Those stands. Gosh, those things are monsters. Where'd you get this? Is this custom made? Yeah, it's a, a guy called Smith and Oak, and he's really amazing, Caleb. I think I just drew him some pictures of what I was thinking it would look like and how I would want to use it, and then he just did such a great job putting it together and making it work really well. Kind of the same with this studio. I mean, I kind of just have like big ideas, and then I've been fortunate enough with this studio to work with really talented people that were able to execute it. He also built me that guitar boat, because I was like, I got this space here. It's probably mm. seven feet by three feet and I would love to have a spot for all the guitars so they weren't just sitting around the room and ringing all the time. I mean, you, you must have just been making music your whole life, right? Uh, yeah, since I was a kid. So my, my dad bought me my first recording deck, you know, one of those multi-track Yamaha things. It was like eight channels and you had to like put a CD in, you would burn the CD. 
you know, the whole deal. And uh, it sounded horrible. And he bought me this like cheap, you know, hundred fifty dollar mic. And I just remember like one of the first times, like I had this old bass, this old crappy bass. And I remember I just like I had a song and I wrote the song. And then I started putting stuff on it. And I just thought it was like, such a cool thing that you could like yeah. make the sound of a record, like just by coming up with combinations and to have all this ability and power to do it. It was like this is insane. So I've been doing this since I was like 17 years old. Where's the computer and what uh, is the it's computer? It's just a little Mac Mini. It's behind the desk. Are you running like uh, Logic or Pro Tools? Or? I have all of them. I use mostly Pro Tools, sometimes Ableton, occasionally Logic, but I'm just kind of getting to know Logic. Clearly the, uh, the Apollo Xs. Yeah, I've got three of those yeah. and I have a Burl for two channels. So there's like 34 channels of inputs. And is this acting as like your, your conversion? Whatever? Just for two channels in. Oh, okay, going in. Yeah, it's right that's actually probably the least efficient part about the studio. I've been trying to trim that down, but my process is not linear at all. So I could I could be close to like mixing. I could be almost done mixing, and then I'm like, I want to recut whatever. And it's like uh, Apollo or Universal Audio is kind of the only one of the only options that people that have really figured out how to like stay low latency. There's really not. I you know I have an HD rig. I just. I bought the stuff and I'm like, I just don't think I want to set this up. I'm right now I'm Apollo just because it's like anyone that's ever come needed to use a studio, like they all know it. All right, and then uh, what are these guys? That's Spectrosonic. So I have a lot of Spectrosonic stuff. I'm good friends with the company. I think they're kind of the best sounding pre's. My buddy Jake Sinclair, he's like a really great oh, I producer. Oh, you know Jake? I've worked with Jake. Yeah, we did a Weezer record and a Courtney Love record. Really? Yeah, so Jake kind of got me onto them and they've become friends of mine. That's awesome. Uh, cool, so you have, well, let's see, six channels of this. Okay, and then there's like a different one here. Yeah, that's Is like modeled more after their actual console. They're like famous consoles. They're like um, the original, I can't remember, I don't remember the details, but it's a very famous console. Like a lot of really big albums were made on them. So these are comp limiters. Yep, they have super high gain, so you actually don't, like you can plug a dynamic mic into them and they sound great. You don't even need a pre. And then is this? It's a fern, it's like a vacuum it's tube a pre. pre. That's the only thing that, like I have a patch bay, so you could theoretically patch them on. That's the only thing that's hardwired in, because it just sounds so good on this Moog One. So it's just going like, you got it on a DI or something? I think so. What are these guys? So those are um, Daking Prees. And yeah, those are, I think those are on drums. Oh yeah, the Oxbox, nice. Yeah, I kind of go between using that and then I have like a couple amps that I'll, like that Fender Champ or the Dan Electro. That Tyler amp, I borrowed one of those. Yeah, from a friend recently. How do you like it? I like it. It's great. I and mean, it's an awesome company. I do this really offensive thing with guitars that Jake actually told me about. I just basically will plug it directly in and then I just go into that Tech 21 Liverpool box and use it as an amp simulator into the this comp thing? limiter to the right. Yeah, this guy right here. So I do this with drum, uh, guitars and bass a lot. It sounds really good. Then oh, there's no nice. amp. It's just an amp simulator. And then into this thing and it sounds great. Okay, so you're just going straight into the pedals yep. and then into the comp limit. Yeah, sometimes no amp. All right, and then you got a B3. Oh yeah, I just got this. It's awesome. I, I so wanted to get one for a long time. Foot took, pedals and everything. It took me like a year to find this thing, but it sounds incredible. Oh yeah. Some good stuff, man. It Thanks. sounds great. Super loud. It's Holy so cow. loud. You can check out some of these guitars. Oh, please, yeah. This belongs to one of my best friends, Thad Cockroll. This is one of the first guitars wow. I really ever spent money on myself. I spent like $300 to get the guitar. It was like made in the 30s. And then I spent like 2000 bucks to make it work. <laughs> this is a guitar made by, you probably know Ruben out in LA does the rubber bridge guitars. No. That's, that's a Jake recommendation as well. These are just kind of ca old catalog guitars. Some Harmony. of these guitars are my dad's when he passed. He, um, we, I brought him to the studio, so this was like something he would take around. This is the guitar that like James Bay uses on a lot of his albums, or at least on his first album. This guitar is my friend Ben Rector's guitar, uh, which is very great, and I would like to not give it back, but it, he will <laughs> ask for it eventually. This is probably the best bass I own. Um, that's a 69 Coronado. I kind of use that the most. I don't know, that Rickenbacker is good. This is the first electric guitar I bought um, probably eight, nine, year, ten years ago. 1964 Jazzmaster. A lot of acoustics. I know, I need more electrics actually. 
Is a lot of the music that you're doing built around acoustic or is it? I think it's to some extent, yeah. What I'm doing next will probably have a little bit more of that feeling. I'm kind of building a lot of sound around these right now. And then uh, what's this? I actually just found that. It was one of my dad's clients and I found this in my, it's been sitting under my piano for like probably six years. You program over here? I have another setup here in case I want to move over here or if I have someone else working here. I like using this thing sometimes. Are you routing stuff in there? Or are you using- yeah, I'll, um... I'll send stuff in here. I'll, some, yeah, I'll, I'll put some sounds in here. I, I really love the way those work. I mean, it's really fun. Obviously you can do it on a computer. I have a couple different drum pieces, but this is the one kind of main drum kit that I have. And this is a uh, Ludwig, an yeah, old Ludwig. Yeah, I can't remember what year it is, but it's pretty old. Yeah, it sounds good in here. I love that piccolo. It's, it's got so much crack, but it, that's right. What's that thing called at the time? Snare weight, that's right. It's so easy to flip up. I love that. And then is that a 57 with no grill on it? Yeah, just grill a no, on no it? thing on it, yeah. Muted Istanbul? Yeah, oh, I, I don't know how. I, I actually mostly just have drummers come over and play stuff, so. All right, and you got another oldie here. And, oh, this is a WFL. I don't know if you know that, but um, Bill Ludwig. Yeah. Without William F. Ludwig. Oh, wow. You know, started Ludwig, and then in the 90s, they sold it. Now, the grandson, William F. Ludwig III, st is starting to make drums again. Oh, wow. And the drums are called WFL3. Oh, but yeah, this is like my, an that OG. Was, that was in my grandfather's barbershop. Dude, this is going to be like a 26-inch kick. It this sounds awesome. It, it sounds really amazing, actually. Let's see, what do we got over there? Oh uh, yeah, it's a Wurlitzer, and then, then just an old Yamaha U1. I'm just starting to use the space, really, for how it's supposed to be used. Yeah. Because I finished an album, and it came out in November, and so most of the time I was more doing like promotional stuff out of here, promo videos for whatever, if, you know. We just did a big live performance in here, filmed it, and so I'm just kind of starting to get creative in the space, and I just actually finished my first song, and Michael Brower's mixing it, I think, in the next couple of days, and so Sweet. it'll be really the first thing I've uh, done in here. When does the live performance stuff come out? Do you know? I think in the next 30 days or so. 30 days, Something and like is that. that going on your YouTube channel? That should be, yeah. So I'll, I'll link all of your YouTube channel and Spotify yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff all like that. that. That's great, and then do you have any idea on when the the single probably like a little bit after that like 40 days Sweet. Maybe, i don't know i'm not really like i have no concept of time and <laughs> i've just gotten worse and worse last thing i'll ask you is this little uh, oh okay this is the grace that's yeah. right so i didn't have that i only got that because other people don't like to like thumb through the computer to like change their volume of course yeah it didn't never really bother me because i don't really change volume that much a couple different people have used the studio um Atlantic Records used it a little bit, and I thought they're probably gonna want a knob. Yeah, that's the only reason I have it. Well, but you it got, is nice. You got one of the best knobs. It is nice. Yeah, it it definitely works great. It's great, man. Okay, well, thank you for doing this with oh, me. Oh yeah, thank and, you. And uh, I'll put the links for everyone to go check your stuff out down in the description. Awesome. And uh, I'll I'll get out of here. Thank you so much for coming over. I love thank your you for channel. Having, I appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you. All right, see ya.